But uh, kind of going down the line here, Malik Monk's going to have to step up in this game. And, you know, he you look at the statistical line for him, and he was pretty decent in the sense that he had his 16 points, five rebounds, five assists. That looks great. He did go five of 14, which isn't like eye-poppingly bad, but it's a little inefficient. And one of the reasons for that was, and Mike Brown didn't call Malik Monk out for this, but I just think Malik Monk, like when I heard Mike Brown say this in the press conference, I immediately thought of Malik Monk because there were like immediate examples that came to mind of him doing this. And early on in the press conference, in his opening remarks, Mike Brown was like, there's just too many times where guys are dribbling into two, sometimes three defenders and just putting up some crazy shot and expecting a foul to come his way. And he pointed out like, you know, I'm a ref with those kinds of shots in the playoffs. I'm not going to blow the whistle. And um, he just kind of was ridiculing the team for complaining too much and looking for foul calls and expecting it, kind of alluding to the fact that, you know, the playoffs are more physical and whatnot. And regardless of who's getting calls and who's not getting calls, you can't expect calls in the playoffs. And... Like I said, I feel like Malik Monk had a few times. Pretty glaringly, it happened late in the game. Mm-hmm. He he took the ball and just dribbled right into like three defenders. And if you're watching the TNT broadcast, Doris Burke was pointing out like, "What the hell are you doing?" And uh, rightfully so. It was it's a little over ambitious and over aggressive. And Mike Brown has taken a lot from like Steve Kerr in the sense that you need to play fast but play disciplined. And um, it just was not disciplined. It, it took the total second element of that philosophy out of mind. So there needs to be a little bit more awareness in that regard. And just overall, I mean, like, I don't think it just is Monk. I mean, like you said, you, you see Sabonis kind of complain to the refs a lot. And you saw Fox do it a lot at different points in this series. I mean, throughout the series, he's, he's, he's done it. I mean, it seemed like down the stretch and really all season, he's kind of done it. But I think at a certain point, Mike Brown's gripe with the team was 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 kind of necessary. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, especially that Monk one at the end, too, where it's like that was a very important possession. And yeah, he he blew it. He went for the foul call. It was like a two on one, too. And Mm -hmm. he was trying to do a fast break by himself. And he was looking for a foul call. It's like, dude. I think you're down, I think they were down five or so. I think that was right before that Curry timeout mishap. So you, you can't be looking for calls. You, you haven't really seen a ton of them. I mean, in game two was kind of crazy. And I think like you said too, uh, and we were kind of talking about this last week, it's like they're going to go They're going to go back home, the Warriors, and they're gonna, the, the calls are going to start going their way. And I'm not saying like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the calls were going the Kings way at home. And then I think they started going the Warriors way a little more when they went home. So maybe they'll be different in game five. They were just too impatient. <laughs> uh, they really thought that, you know, they'd come come out and brought it after kind of getting hit in the mouth to start game three. First time on the, on the road in a playoff environment. And they just they were in it the whole time. They they played very physically, and they, they might have honestly been the more physical team, but not by a huge margin. And the, the inexperience and uh, kind of 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 making bad shot selections, expecting calls, all these things just really came into play. And I guess like that that can come out in an optimistic sense as like a massive lesson. Got well, they got that out of the way, you know. Yeah, but it it'd be interesting with the urgency up because fox is kind of ailing a little bit are they going to be able to to stay disciplined with that kind of challenge yeah they gotta (laughs) i mean they want any chance to win the series i mean mean, it's not even if they want to win more games i mean fox broke his finger i mean it's it's important game five of course but it's like man his, his finger's broken if they they make it in the playoffs they somehow win this game and win the series they're gonna have to deal with the same thing next series unless his hand really isn't bothering him and we're just overblowing this, which I doubt it. Um, They're going to have to figure it out for more than just this game, this important game five, whether Fox plays or not, they're going to be dealing with now an injured deer and Fox going forward. That's true. And they've responded to challenges before. And (laughs) just, this is, this is very difficult. We'll see, but getting up good shots and not expecting foul calls is probably a good place to start. Yeah, 100%. It is. Let's hope they can do that. 
Well, another thing that cost them the game in terms of an experience was on two, like two straight possessions, I uh, think. Yeah, uh, I think it they was. They just too. gave far too much space. The K- Kentucky connection, <laughs> Fox and Monk back to back, gave Curry and then Clay far too too much space. The Curry one was quite egregious. Um, yeah, that was terrible. That was just a terrible route. Both of them just took terrible routes to the ball. That that might be an experience, but also, and Mike Brown kind of posited this in the post game press conference. That might have been a little bit of fatigue whether mental or physical is that do you think that was something that was wearing on them or was that such a slug fest on the road that a few days off that gets a little better because those were just i don't expect them to make those mistakes again those were so bad that's sick like as mike brown said to put it in another perspective that's six points in a game that finished with a one point margin yeah i mean i don't know that, that fox one was pretty bad it's just like dude it's Steph Curry. <laughs> Stay on him. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't expect him to make those mistakes. And maybe it's just maybe it's these games are going to mean a little more going forward. Maybe they'll be a little more sharp. Like that game was like, ah, even if we lose, it's two two. It's not like we're going down three one like they would. I mean, they they better not make those same mistakes because yeah, they missed those two shots. Kings could. I mean, technically, have won by four, right, or five, four. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> they miss one. I mean, the, the but the, the thing is, is it's like, is there a fatigue factor? Because it wasn't just those two plays. There were a couple transition plays. I think one where Clay just took it all the way coast to coast. And there's just nobody was on top of stopping the ball. That's not like Clay's a burner, you know? Yeah, that's true. So it's just like, and Thompson had a, a decent game. I mean, he had a really good game, actually. Um, but come on, that stuff can't happen. And they'd been pretty decent at transition transition defense really all season and in the playoffs. So it was kind of bizarre to kind of just see them drop off like that. And uh, I wonder Mm -hmm. if it was just, it seemed like fatigue in some way or another had to play into it. But I wonder if it was fatigue in the moment or fatigue overall at this point, you know, playing at that point, game 86 going on game 87. Yeah, I mean, it definitely could be. It didn't seem fatigued to me. I never really thought about fatigue. Well, it's interesting, too, because I feel like on the notion of fatigue, it's like that could easily be extended to the Warriors, too, because Curry played like 42 minutes, Mm -hmm. and the buzz in Bay Area media is just like, whoa, like, is he going to be able to do that? I guess in the same sense as the Fox thing, it's like if they get beyond this series – it's not just about getting beyond the series. It's about what happens after that, too. So, yeah, I don't know. But it, it almost felt like more of a mental fatigue for the Kings. Um, yeah, I would say it'd be more mental than physical. And that, that could easily be the inex- – it, it could, going back to it, it could be the inexperience of just kind of getting lost in the moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, because in combination with those and the mistakes on offense of bad so- shot selection and whatnot, all of those kind of compiled into just this pile of mistakes. I mean, the Warriors made mistakes too. Draymond, after the game, said he gave Fox too much space on that late three, and they called the timeout when they didn't have it. Kevon Looney had a couple moving screens in the game. He had one late, and then they Steve Kerr decided to challenge it. Steve Kerr and Mike Brown remind me so much of it. They're, just, they're one and the same in just so many different ways. Listening <laughs> to Steve Kerr in post-game press conferences, crediting other guys, being friendly and funny with the media, all that stuff. They're the same. And in, in the same way, they both make terrible decisions to challenge calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he thought he was going to win that. I think the interesting thing was was Curry calling that timeout because that just oh yeah seems so unlike him for a guy that has so much experience. And Steve Kerr tried to take credit for it afterwards, which again reminded me of Mike Brown. He's like, oh, that's my fault. You know, I should have told the guys that we didn't have any timeouts coming out of the huddle. And yeah, maybe he should have said that, but it's like Kerr and Mike Brown say it all the time. Like, and Popovich said it. It's like, at the end of the day, these players are great and they kind of have, things have to come from within. And like Steph Curry just dropped the ball there. He almost paid for it too. Imagine if the Kings won that game. Because of that play, that'd be <laughs> iconic. Yeah, that'd be- especially after that Fox three, it's like, oof. <laughs> like, whoa! Seriously, that's why I was so they- upset when they missed that when they missed the game winner. It made me just extra upset. I'm like, oh man, that could have been one of the craziest comebacks. 
that was such a just a battle. <laughs> But it was just riddled with so many mistakes in the last five or six minutes. It's just like they they just they had plenty of opportunities and they blew a lot of them down the stretch. It was rough. I mean, I lost them in the game. It was a slugfest, but geez, a lot of sloppy play too. 